remember where you were at when the Lord found you? Do you remember like the state of mind you were in or the frame of mind or like the life situations that you were in when the Lord found you? I know a lot of people say that they found God, but actually God has never been lost and he never will be. We're the lost sheep who have either gone astray from once knowing him or have never ever knew him before. We're the ones who are lost. So I was going through some of my old writings today and I came across this journal entry. So today, that's what I want to do. I just want to read this journal entry and let you know kind of where I was at before the Lord found me. Like the things that I was thinking, the uh, I was into self-help, right? And personal development. And while I was in that that time, I was really in the pursuit of living a better way. I was in the pursuit of just being a better person and just having things in my life be better. <laughs> I mean, really, that's what I was looking for. I was uh, raised in... Um, in a home that never put God first. I don't even know. I don't even know if they even thought to put God first. My parents are still alive. I should ask them that because I don't know if they ever heard about Christ when they were younger. I'm sure they had, but uh, I know that I had heard about Christ. I had went to Bible Scouts. I had went to youth group. I had went to this, uh, this group called Awana, but I never, never had my eyes opened to scripture like I did when the Lord found me in 2009, I believe it was. But listen to something that I wrote in 2008. It says, I just realized this morning that I don't love and approve of myself as much as I should. I was watching a video on YouTube of Louise Hay talking to an audience about loving themselves. And she wanted all of them to say, I love and approve of myself. So I did it. I've been reading and listening to her works for the past few months, but I said it and it made me cry. For the first time in my journey to self-love and approval, I finally had an aha moment. I realized that I don't love and approve of myself as much as I thought I did. I myself am in the beginning of change. I have a lot of internal work to do, but I'm willing to put the work in for a happy, healthy life. I know I deserve to be happy. I was put on this earth to experience the great joy of life, as was every single person on earth right now. We weren't meant to live in such anxiety in stress. So I commit right here and right now to put an end to my suffering. I will practice daily on loving and approving of myself completely and wholeheartedly. And I'll start right now by saying I love and approve of myself and feel what that means inside of me. Let me say it again. I love and approve of myself. That feels better already. I love you. I love you, Michelle. I really love you. I feel better, lighter. I love this lady. She's an angel in my eyes. Thank you. I'm willing to change. I'm willing to release my old patterns and negative beliefs. The power that has created me has given me the power to create my new life. I choose positive thinking. I begin anew right here and right now. In the infinity of life where I am, all is perfect, whole, and complete. The past has no power over me because I am willing to learn and to change. I see the past as necessary to bring me to where I am today. I am willing to begin where I am right now, to clean the rooms of my mental house. I know it does not matter where I start, so I now begin with the smallest and the easiest rooms. And in that way, I will see results quickly. I am thrilled to be in the middle of this adventure, for I know I will never go through this particular experience again. I am willing to set myself free. All is well in my world. I love 
and approve of myself. Now, you know, that might sound like great information. Like, you know, I'm happy and I'm sad for myself that I was in that place. I'm happy because I was actually willing and open to change. I was, you know, really pursuing change at that time. But I'm sad for myself because I had put it all on myself. Like I was the one who was going to change myself. And I had been trying to do that for many, many years. I mean, if I wrote this in 2008, my self-help journey started way back in 2000, 2001 maybe. So for years, here I am, I'm still trying to change myself, still writing down. And I even put in here, I'm willing to set myself free. As Christians, we know that it's the truth that sets us free and nothing sets us free like the truth. So I um, want to encourage you, if you find yourself in a place where you don't feel free, where you're not happy, you're not joyful, and you're trying with all your might, all your strength, all your will to change yourself, I just pray that you would have an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. So here's another journal entry that I want to read to you, and this is in 2015. So that one was in 28, and this one is in 2015. And I started out by writing scripture. It says, the Lord is my strength and shield. I trust him with all my heart. He helps me, and my heart is filled with joy. I burst out in song of thanksgiving. That's Psalms 28, 7. And then in Ephesians 3.12, it says, In him and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. And the last one, Nehemiah 9.6, it says, You give life to everything. In the multitudes of heaven worship you. And I go on to say, Lord, I thank you so much for your word. I thank you for your spirit who lives in me. Lord, thank you for Bible teachers who love you so much that it impacts all the rest of us. Lord, I want to love you that much. I want to trust you with all my heart. And I want to live a life that honors and glorifies you with all that I do. Increase my faith, Lord, and increase my love for you. Amen. Can you see the transformation there? I didn't do anything to set myself free, like to be actually free. To be free in the Lord means to be content. It means to be hopeful. It means to trust the Lord with all of my life. Listen, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, and neither do you. But you know who does? The Lord. And we can trust him no matter what it is, no matter what happens. We can trust him because he gives life to everything in the multitudes of heaven. Worship him. He is worthy of all of our honor and praise and glory. And if you are still in that place where you are trying to change yourself, my goodness, I pray that you have an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. And he radically transforms your life because that's what he did for me. I was in the pursuit of changing myself. For like 12 years. And when I came to the end of myself, he was right there. He was right there. He found me in the midst of all of that negativity. I call it negativity now. Now, there's a lot of good things that I learned on my self-development, self-help journey. I mean, a lot of good things. I understood the power of the mind. I mean, the word says that we have the mind of Christ and we are to focus on things that are good and meaningful and healthy and joyous. But when we take that all on ourselves, and we don't take into account the Holy Spirit or his word or Jesus Christ, we're missing everything that we need to change, to grow, to mature, to develop. And so we will be continuously stuck. If we're right here, we'll be continuously stuck. This is a trap. This is a hamster wheel that you are going to 
just keep on going around and around and around. I wrote this in 2008, and I did not come face to face with the Lord until 2009. And then I didn't write this until 2015. Like, it's a process. But I know that the process before the Lord found me it was terrible. I was so depleted. I was so worn out. I was so over it that I was just ready to throw in the towel like this is not working. I've been actively trying to change myself for 12 years. Yes, yeah, some things changed. They did. You know, some things changed. Some of my behaviors changed. Um, some of my choices changed. But really, I'm not looking for just behavior modification. And I don't think you are either, especially if you're watching this video. You know somewhere deep inside you that God, that Jesus Christ, that the Holy Spirit is the answer. Okay? They are the answer that you are seeking to make real change in your life. So today I want to encourage you to get off the hamster wheel. To stop trying to do it all in your own strength. Stop trying to change yourself. Stop trying to get to heaven on your own merits, by your own good works. Because the word tells us that nobody comes to salvation on their own. That it is a gift from God so that no one can boast. Okay, None of us can boast about our relationship with the Lord, about how we got there. Because it was God who was searching for us. He's looking for all of his lost sheep. Okay? And he puts people and things in our life to point us toward him. But not all of us follow those messages. Not all of us. I was introduced to the Lord when I was just a child. A child. I knew about the Lord. I heard the truth. And it didn't change me. I didn't even think much about it. I don't even know if I thought about it once I left the youth group or, or left Bible study or Bible scouts, I mean, or Awana. I don't know. I don't remember thinking about him. I don't remember thinking about it. So it wasn't until I came to the end of myself and he was right there and he just transformed my life. And I just pray that he does the same for you. So today that's my word for you to stop trying in your own strength. Allow the Lord and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit to help you change your life because they're the only ones who can really do it. Amen. Amen. Take care and God bless. I'll see you next week.